and the Cooper Environmental Center. My name is Nikki Vernaccio and I'm the Senior Park Naturalist here at Cat Asylum Park. And I'm here today to bring you another animal friend that we have here at the Nature Center. I'd like to introduce you to our friend Magellan. Magellan is a diamond back terrapin. So he's actually one of five diamond back terrapins that we have here at the Nature Center. We have two that we have on display, and we have three others that we have that we take out to school groups and classes and clubs and boy and Girl Scout groups um, that we love to show them. Um, these turtles are just awesome turtles. They have great personalities and they always want to go, 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 go. Now, Magellan is actually, let me tell you a little bit about him personally. Um, he is named Magellan after an explorer. So here at the Cooper Environmental Center, we do love our jobs. We love working with these animals. Um, so all of our diamondback terrapins are actually named after explorers. So that's kind of a little fun fact. This is Magellan, named after Ferdinand Magellan, who was one of the first people to circumnavigate the Earth. Now, I bet you didn't think you were gonna get a history lesson as long as a lesson on diamondback terrapins. Um, his friend Ponce lives next to him in our animal care room, and Ponce is named after Ponce de Leon. He also has a friend Cortez, and later on in our presentation, you're going to meet Lewis and Clark. So that's just a little fun fact here of how we name some of our animals. So this is Magellan. He's about 12 years old. He's a mature male or a boy diamondback terrapin. Now the name Diamondback Terrapin, it's kind of a mouthful. It's something you don't really think about when you think of a turtle. But if you take a look on the back of his shell, on his scoots, there's set circles that are on his scoots that actually are shaped in kind of diamond-like rings. So that's kind of where they get the name Diamondback from. The word Terrapin is actually a Native American term that means an edible turtle that lives in brackish water. So brackish water. Brackish water is a type of water that has a little bit of salt in it. It's not quite as salty as the ocean, but you still would want to drink the water. You would still taste the saltiness of it. So diamondback terrapins are extremely special because they're really the only turtle that live primarily in a brackish water habitat, like a salt marsh or an estuary. So here at Cat Asylum Park, about 70% of the park is made up of salt marsh. So this is a great place for diamondback terrapins to live. <laughs> they have special adaptations that help them to live around the salt marsh and also in the bay habitat. They have a little nose that I think you could see up top of there. That little nose helps them to breathe. Now, even though he is an aquatic turtle, he uses lungs just like we do and breathes air and oxygen just like we do. So he actually has to hold his breath when he's swimming underwater. The only difference is he can hold his breath for an hour to five hours long. So that's quite a longer time than we can hold our breath. He also has these great feet. They're like huge paddles. They're webbed feet, kind of like a duck. He has skin in between those toes, and that helps him to really swim long distances and against the current and the tide. So those feet are very special to help him to move around. He has little fingernails. Those little fingernails help him to dig, to climb up onto land, and to also to catch his food as well. So turtles have this great little face, especially diamondback terrapins. They have a really light colored beak on their mouths. Remember, turtles don't have any teeth. They almost have a beak like a bird. Um, and they'll use that beak to kind of catch their food. So I'm actually gonna feed Magellan today. Uh, Magellan loves to eat, and um, they like mostly to eat meat. So they're a carnivore, unlike a box turtle, which is an omnivore. So he's gonna be out there out in the bay. He would eat fish and crabs and shrimp and um, clams, mussels, all sorts of good things that he could find out there in the bay. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna put him in, and I have some uh, silver sides for him today. Silver sides is a type of fish. 
uh, type of bait fish, it's also called spearing, that can be found out in the bay, something he would like to eat. Yeah, he just grabs that right off the tongs. He might swallow it whole, like that big piece there, that was kind of a half a spearing. Let's see, I'm gonna give him a little bit bigger piece and see if what he does with his. Oh, he's looking now, he's ready. So watch, he'll take his front claws and you kind of rip apart that fish into smaller pieces. Whoop. Whoop. Down it goes in one big gulp. So they don't really chew their food. They really just use their mouth to kind of grab. They use their claws to kind of rake it apart and to break it up into smaller ones. Let's see if he has another. Now Magellan is about 12 years old. He came to us as actually someone's pet. So as a young turtle, I don't know if he was born out in the wild or if he was born in captivity, but someone had him for a long time um, and decided they couldn't care for him any longer. So they brought him to the nature center and we were actually able to take him as an animal ambassador. Um, so he isn't able to be released back out into the wild. As you can see, he's much too used to um, tongs and tweezers. He knows where to find uh, those tongs and tweezers. And he probably wouldn't really know what to do with a live fish or a live crab or a live shrimp that's swimming around. He might have a hard time finding that on his own. So that's why we have him here at the Nature Center to kind of help talk about these animals and how they are. So diamondback terrapins are actually a species of concern here in New Jersey. Um, they're an animal that a lot of their habitat has been taken away. A lot of the salt marshes that they used to live upon are now bulkheads or docks. So they have a hard time finding spots to come out to lay their eggs when they're, it's time for them to go nesting. They also travel good distances when they're about to lay their eggs. The females will come out of the bay and they'll walk quite a long ways to find a nice sandy spot to dig a hole and to lay their eggs. So often they do get hit by cars, especially if they're in an area where a big turtle population might be. They're all crossing over around May, month of May and June, looking for nesting sites. So unfortunately, road kills happen quite often. Something very special that happens with these turtles, unfortunately, has to do with crab pots. Now, if you live in an estuary area, like around here in the Barnegat Bay estuary, or maybe the Chesapeake Bay area in Maryland, um, these turtles are very common there, but also is crabbing in crabs. Now, I'm not really talking about crabbing with a hand line or with a pot that opens up on all three or four sides, but with a pot that's really enclosed and has a small hole. What often happens with these turtles is they'll go inside that crab pot looking for the bait, and then they have a hard time finding their way out. Now remember, they do breathe air like we do. And even though they can hold their breath for a long time, they still can drown in those crab pots, which can become a problem. Also, those crab pots sometimes will break loose of their lines and become what we call ghost pots, which means they tumble out through the bay and become traps to anything that could be out there, catching them and trapping them under the water. So there's a neat little device called a BRD, or a bycatch reduction device, that actually can be put on a crab pot. I think many of the new crab pots have these on them. Um, but you can put this device on your crab pot, and this actually blocks a terrapin from going inside, which is kind of helpful to really help their numbers. <laughs> He's smiling at us. <laughs> you can tell Magellan likes to eat too. He's got a little bit of a muffin top hanging out there. Um, so those, those uh, crab pots are really important to help prevent these um, turtles from drowning and having uh, many casualties. Um, oftentimes they're also collected illegally as pets. So do you remember I mentioned before that I said turtles, or terrapin means an edible turtle that lives in brackish water. Well, diamondback terrapins are edible. Can you imagine eating a turtle? Well, back in the 18 and 1900s, you could find turtle on many restaurant menus or taverns or bars. Terrapin stew was a popular food item um, during that time. So really there was a hunting season for diamondback terrapins all the way up to 2016. You could go out in the middle of winter with your bare hands and you could harvest terrapins out of the mud. 
Well, in the year 2016, um, legislation changed the category of diamondback terrapins to a non-game species, protecting them from hunting and from harvesting and also helping to conserve those numbers. Well, we're gonna move on over and take a look at two of our other turtles on display. We'll let Magellan be for a little while. Um, he doesn't mind being out of the water. They'll come out and they'll dry off or be inside, but we'll give him a break and come on over here to our display. So this is uh, two diamondback terrapins. This is Lewis and Clark. Um, Lewis and Clark um, kind of have the same story as Magellan. Uh, they were kept as pets. They're actually kept together. So they're the only two terrapins that we have that we allow to actually live together because that's kind of where they're comfortable doing um, and where, where they're together. Um, all of our uh, enclosures that our animals live have a nice basking areas for them to come out if they want to warm up or to dry off or to rest or sleep. Uh, plenty of swimming room and you also plenty of things for the turtles to kind of swim around and look at and see in rocks and shells. Diamondback terrapins have a big personality. They're actually a really smart turtle. Um, they're really kind of outgoing with each other. Um, I kind of like to think of them as Labrador retrievers of the turtle world. They're smart, they're goofy, and they love to eat. So they're a great turtle to kind of watch and see what they're doing. If you're interested in learning more about diamondback terrapins, there's a great website called Project Terrapin, which is actually um, sponsored by the Ocean County Mates Academy, that's the Marine Academy of Technology and Environmental Sciences. And they have students that uh, provide thousands of hours in research, education, and conservation on the diamondback terrapin. So you'll have to check that out. So thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions about our terrapins, we will definitely answer your questions later on today. Um, and then coming up next week, we're gonna have our other education programs Wednesday and Friday again at 11 a.m. I believe Wednesday we're looking to do uh, more in depth on a horseshoe crab. So thank you for joining us. Um, again, my name is Nikki from Caddis Island County Park and the Cooper Environmental Center. You guys have a great day and see you soon.